you know, a lot of people get lucky in business. A lot of people just know the right people. They can get money to, you know, to capitalize their business. But I think from my perspective, what I had was uh, just a um, terrific work ethic and a drive to succeed that, you know, not necessarily everybody today has. The best decision my parents could have made was to send me to Sacred Heart Academy. And um, I'm the oldest of five kids, so Catholic family. So each of us had the responsibility for um, paying a good percentage of our tuition. Um, but, but my four years at Sacred Heart probably helped define and shape uh, who I am today. Um, and, and the friends I made then are still, you know, they're lifelong friends. But it gave me the opportunity to explore leadership. So all four of those years I was involved in, whether it was student council or we had a, what we call 100 Club, which was the kind of more of the sports kind of um, club. And then I've always played sports. So basketball was my favorite. Um, no no uh, secret about that and why I love, you know, hanging out with Coach Cal and watching the Wildcats, but um, had the opportunity to be on the championship team and that was in 1976. So I will never forget the, you know, the excitement about that and how hard we played and how hard we practiced and, you know, just that, that great feeling. And I worked two jobs and um, one was during the day at a company that was just moving from Nashville into Louisville and it, and it was more or less a bed and bath shop so I had the opportunity to see it from um, you know for the from the ground up you know so I helped unload the trucks put away inventory and then during that first semester they they gave me the opportunity to sell uh, to really work with customers um, and, and and in the evenings I worked at a grocery store so you know I was really focused in on on managing time and uh, and earning enough income to go to college. But I think during my experience with the retail, I just truly fell in love with being able to serve customers and uh, to help them with their choices and selection. And, and being the competitive person that I am, you know, I was you know, 17, 18 years old and writing pretty significant business. So that was, that was, that was truly a lot of fun. Um, I was a semester late starting at UK went four and a half years, had no idea what I wanted to do, and then finally decided to create my own degree. Because I, I took what I loved, and then I kind of meshed it together, and today it's a pretty well-known you know, field, and it's, it was international studies. So I, after I graduated then, I went to uh, work for Northwestern Mutual. Again, not knowing what I wanted to do, and loving so many things, but seriously not knowing what my passion was. But it was at Northwestern Mutual that I really began a, a serious foundation for understanding sales, doing needs assessments, uh, cold calling, which not everybody can do. I will admit that that was hard. And, um, and then during some period of time there, um, I, I kind of had this notion that I wanted to be, I wanted to start a company where customers came to me. You know, when I, when I started the company, it was probably because I needed a job and when I was 23 years old, nobody would hire me, right? Jim Host didn't hire me. So I thought, I must be terrible, I've got to go find a job, I'm going to starve. You know, I was entering into this industry really without any capital, didn't really have a mentor, um, didn't have a business degree. And, you know, when you're 23 and you're going to a bank or you're going to the, the owner of a manufacturing facility, and you, you tell them you know, what you're going to do or what you're not going to do and you establish a open and transparent relationship with them, I think that that goes a very long way. I've always said that if there's bad news, I'm going to be the first to tell you. I, I, I don't know that I could have gotten to where we are today without having that level of uh, respect, you know, that I feel like people gave to us because we, you know, when we said something, we, you know, we meant it and we stood behind it. For the first 20 years, we opened one store a year, so from 1983 to 2003, 
I do remember sitting, we took, we closed the stores for a few days and we took everybody to the Greenbrier and just really celebrated it. And, 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 and then we looked at one another and said, hey, I don't think we're done. I think we should expand outside of West Virginia. So all the years that we had been operating at our mattress warehouse, we then began to operate under Sleep Outfitters, which was a new name that we had created. And so from, well, over the last 15 years then, we've added, well, we're up to about 165 stores now, so 100, I mean, 140 stores or so, 145. And we're now in seven states. A lot of that came through about five different acquisitions. So where we had done a lot of organic growth over the first 20 years, we then began to have opportunities presented to us uh, to buy small chains or, or in some cases larger chains. But th th there's no question that those first couple of acquisitions really challenged everybody. And it was, you know, I was slinging mattresses on a truck, driving trucks, and you know, it, and, and it, was, it was, while it was fun, it was also really challenging. Over time, you know that there are, you're going to experience some kind of a challenge. If you're not experiencing that every so often, you're not pushing the envelope enough, you're not trying enough new things. You have to get as much insight and feedback from as many advisors as you possibly can. And um, sometimes you have to slow down in order to speed up. I think that that's one of the things I've learned probably over the last five years. Sometimes you have to retract in order to, to expand and to grow. So we're trying today to, to think through our work whole model where historically it was based off of more of a convenience factor. Uh, today we're looking at more of a destination type of store uh, because we know that people go online and they do most of their shopping before they get to the store. Uh, mattresses are those one things that, the, especially over a certain price point, that customers really want to lie on. I'm not sure you're going to want to spend $5,000 on a bed you, you, know, you preview on the internet, no matter how many reviews and stars it may have. So, but it's kind of exciting. We're at that place today where we're, you know, you know, we're reinventing. I think if there's one, one piece of advice, I've been thinking about this a while, uh, that I would give to new um, or, or entrepreneurs in general, people that have had their businesses, is to, to disrupt your own business. And you know, when things are great, the last thing you want to do is break it for the sake of breaking it in order to see how you would fix it back. Um, but that's exactly what I'm you know, recommending. When, when you start to figure out your purpose and what your why is and what, what your passion is, it makes what you're doing not seem like it's a job or a career, but what your lifelong work is. So if I look back over 35 years, and when you're 23, you have no idea, right? You don't just wake up and say, hey, my life calling is, unless you're somebody really special. But, but I think that during the journey, I discovered that the reason I'm on this earth is to give back to others and to help people get a great night's sleep. Um, and we do that through our products and the people that we hire.